Hey everyone, it's Dr. Tanisha Bibbs. Welcome to our season one, episode four, postpartum health, y'all. Listen, we're talking about nutrition for moms, especially in the fourth trimester stage of having, after they have their babies. I'm going to be, um, I'm going to have my co-host with me. And when I tell you guys, we're going to make an amazing dish. This is really simple and easy to actually make. And so we're going to show you how to make it hot and also cold. And I'm telling you guys, I just can't wait. Are y'all ready? Let's go. So we are getting ready to start really putting this dish together. But before I do that, let me introduce you all to my co-host, Sasha. Come on through, Sasha. Come on through, Sasha. <laughs> Sasha's going to help me cook this meal because... But um, Sasha's going to help me cook this meal because I believe one of the things that um, we deal with in the fourth, fourth trimester postpartum mm -hmm. is uh, moms want to breastfeed. And a lot of times, um, you know, the, the eating healthy is a really a bit of a challenge. It's a big challenge, um, yeah. And I think, I think when we as birth workers, you know what I mean, we have to introduce nutrition all the time to them. So um, what are some of the things that you've actually seen? As far as like, eating? Yeah, eating. Oatmeal is great. Yeah, oatmeal is excellent. Feeding. Oatmeal is excellent. Oatmeal is excellent. Another thing, too, is soups. I'm learning Ooh. that because, I mean, although we want to dabble, dibble dabble into postpartum, like cookies and teas, I think that's great. But what I do believe is that when you start to put in healthy nutrition in your body, like your greens and your carrots and things like that, and garlic is also good as well. Um, it can also help with your milk production. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're doing a uh, creamy chicken spinach soup or you can also make it as like a some type of um like a pasta dish okay. um what i want to also rem let you all know that mm -hmm. you want to be careful also with your pastas you don't want to eat too much of it all the time your greens are actually good you have your celery that's also good as well and these are all of your um yellow foods which is your cheese and your parmesan and things like that so this dish i wouldn't say do every day i would say you could still incorporate it into your meal because you still need those he healthy carbohydrates okay yes, you know so you want to help me make this dish absolutely all right it so guys amazing yes yes so what we did was we use um chicken broth you can also okay. use the low sodium chicken broth you can get that in any grocery store or you can do uh bone broth Oh. And if you make your own bone broth, you can actually use that, which will add a little bit more flavors and things like that to it. And you can put them in the refrigerator or put them in the uh, freezer to freeze. Okay. And then when you're ready to make this dish, the um, broth actually gives it a lot of flavors as well. Okay. So we want to do that. So this is what we're going to do. So what we did was we're going to make this though dish as a pasta dish. Okay. And if you want to make it as a soup dish you want to use more bone broth or chicken low sodium why am i saying use low sodium because in postpartum you want to be very careful how much salt intake that you do intake as a um, in your fourth trimester especially for those of you who have dealt with preeclampsia be very very careful um your you know what you're eating um be very intentional and i would use a journal you know, I think a journal is really good. That's a good idea. Yeah, actually. really That's use good. a journal to kind of journal what you're eating to kind of know if there's going to be, if, if you're having an effect or some type of allergic reactions or the, any type of anything, you can kind of see the, you know, what you wrote down and you can kind of what pinpoint on what you're eating. So yeah. why don't you come on up a little bit and right. um, so you, she going to be my taste test today? I am absolutely here for the <laughs> tasting. Okay. <laughs> so we, what we have here, we do have a pound of chicken. This is, you can get this definitely, you can do it um, from the grocery store. You can, they have these little chicken th um, breasts. You can actually use those pre-chicken breasts. The pre-cut ones. The pre-cut ones. Pre Cooked. Yeah, the pre-cooked okay. ones to make sure, but make sure they're not like, um, make sure that they would, make sure that it's not like 
um, has a lot of uh, salt, salt or Sodium. seasonings yeah, and things seasoning. like that. Just a plain okay. one is fine. Or you can just take a chicken and you can cut that chicken up, leftover chicken. You can just kind of cut up shredded chicken. It's good as well. Uh, so that is actually good. Spinach is always going to add a greatness to the dish as well um, for the flavor. And if you like spinach, if you like that i'm a kale person okay. um but i would cook my kale first because you know kale can be tend to be a little hard so that helps with that and then we have the carrot we have sour cream um heavy whipping cream which is going to give it that creaminess you know what i mean and we have some seasoning and also some olive um, oil. Now on this side here, we do have some cheese. You also want to be careful how much cheese you put in inside of the dish because you don't want to uh, use too much cheese, um, especially if you have a allergy to, you know, dairy. Um, dairy. So just be careful. Mm -hmm. And you can also oh. use a vegan cheese too. Oh really? You can make this dish a vegan dish. Okay. How you make it a de vegan dish is your noodles, you can have your garbanzo bean noodles, okay, which are made out of chickpeas. Yes, versus yes, yes. the flour noodles and things like that. So you mm -hmm. could use that. We have also onions. Onions always add flavor to a dish. You have your celery and you also have your garlic. Garlic is my favorite. It helps. Um, garlic is good, y'all. I mean, you can use garlic as, a, uh, they use it as cough syrup. So you can take a garlic, mm -hmm. you can crush it, put it on your, uh, um, in your pot with some uh, coconut oil and crush it and you let it get really black. You let it sit for a couple of days and you can make cough syrup. My mom, wow. my mom is from Jamaica, so she used to give it to us all the time. And so that's how we were able to stay like cold free. Like we wow. didn't have colds when I was growing up. You are teaching because me my mom. something. That <laughs> yeah. is amazing. So let's get started. I'm gonna have you, with, with the dish, normally you can all just kind of put this stuff in all in one. You can put it in a crock pot, easy, easy, go do what you gotta do and come back. Or you can cook it on top of the stove. Um, so I decided to cook the noodles. So we cooked the noodles and we used a, um, you can stir that noodle. Okay. And we definitely used a, um, some broth. You can see the little broth in there. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And so because this chicken mm. is, you, you don't want the chicken to be raw. This is cooked pretty, pretty pre-cooked. So you want to go ahead and put, I'm going to put the chicken. You want to put the chicken in there? You can dump it in. Okay. We can stir. put the chicken in there. This is a pound of chicken. You want some chicken in there, okay, y'all? Can the whole family eat this? Because this looks like it's going to be yeah, the whole family, really great. Yes, it is. The, fam the whole family can actually eat it. Now, remember I told you when you're making it, you can make it out, out of a soup. Mm -hmm. um, if you do a soup, I would not do two cups of noodles. I would do one cup of noodle because, you remember, your noodles expand and it soaks up all of your liquid. So you want to make sure that you put... Um, I would just use one cup, but this is two cups, so we're gonna make some, uh, make a more of a pasta dish. Okay. All right. You could spinach is also good, so we're gonna do some spinach. You want to go ahead and um, put that in. And if you want to make it a pasta dish, you can definitely take your carrots and you could kind of make sure your carrots are cooked a little bit. Um, where after you put all this in, you got the you know the noodles in. You want to also be careful. Like I said, you do, if you're gonna do a pasta dish, you wanna you don't want to bit too much noodles or you know what I mean. Yeah. Or if you're gonna do a soup dish, um, you want it a little bit more soupy. And also you can use more chicken broth. So part of the reason why we have the olive oil is to cook down the celery, the onions, and the garlic because you want those to marinate really good together. And so. So far, what we got here is the pasta, the um, spinach, and also the chicken breast. And you want to make sure that cooks down really well um, because, of course, you just want to make sure it cooked down. So the next step to do, of course, um, when you cook in all of these, we definitely like to do these three here. We put, um, we make the olive oil, put some olive oil, um, some garlic, and also some celery. These, this is what you want to cook on top of the stove and saute it just a little bit. Not too much, but just enough to where you can still taste it in the, in the meal. So what you're saying is, before we start all of this, mm -hmm. we take these we ones saute and saute them, saute them mm -hmm. and then we put them all in Absolutely, there. because you, what you're gonna do is, when you put it on top of the stove, of course, if it's, if it's not cooked and it's, everything is like raw, then you wanna cook your meat at, at least. Okay. You don't wanna, put the raw meat with the pasta. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so you want to, exactly. Contamination. A exactly. Okay. And so, um. I'm 
Dr. Jacqueline Walters, a board-certified OBGYN and the medical director for Surrogacy Miracles and Consulting. And I'm Shadina Blunt, the founder, co-owner, and the executive director here at Surrogacy Miracles and Consulting. We welcome everyone, including the LGBTQ families. And we are here to assist you through this complex process and the journey. And together, we, we are, are Surrogacy Miracles, Miracles and, and Consulting. Consulting. is we're just gonna add this because one of the things about a crock pot is that you really don't have, I love crock pot cooking. Yes. Because, you know, because you're so on the go, you, you don't have to necessarily cook all this stuff down depending on what kind of crock pot you have. My crock pot has a pressure cooker. And mm -hmm. sometimes I may put it on a pressure cooker or I may put it on um, a slow cook. I love the slow cook because you know when your, cook, your food cooks slow, that's a good it's thing, tasty. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, exactly. And it's, it's just right when you put. So I'm put gonna it have you put these in here sure. to add those in. Definitely, and you want to add just a little bit, guys. All of the recipes you want that me to I put all the onions? yeah, just no, some just some of the onions. Um, all the uh, everything that's in here is gonna be on the website. You can go to beautyandthebaby.com to get the website on how to cook this. Um, we're definitely gonna put a little carrots in there. I love so carrots yummy. myself because carrots always add some type of flavor and just prettiness to the dish. And we're gonna use a little bit of garlic here. Yeah. This is looking amazing. I'm gonna yep. stir it a little bit and I'm gonna show you all. Yeah. This is so colorful. It looks amazing. Look at this. Mmm. And it smells wonderful. <laughs> I look forward to digging in. <laughs> so you also want to put sour cream. It's going to help to make it creamy, and it's going to help to give it that creamy uh, noodle that I was talking about. It's yes. going to help to give it that creaminess. So you just only want to put a little bit in there. So you when you talk about, go ahead, you oh, can put ahead. it in. But So when you were talking about making it more like a vegan dish, you can do that. What would I put in the place of the cream? Um... Well, with a vegan dish, uh, what I would do is, well, I don't know about the vegan. I'm going to be honest with you. I'll say plant-based. Okay. More so than Plant anything based. else. Because okay. vegans, some vegans, they eat, um, they eat like what? They do dairy. like eggs and dairy and, and eggs, stuff like that. Yeah. So I would say if you're going to do it all plant-based, yeah. you're not going to be able to do the sour cream. You have to make your sour cream. Okay. So you you can make it with, you could do like a, use garbazzo bean noodles. You could also make your sour cream using cashews. Mm, so that's right. yeah, yeah that you can make true. yep you can use cashews. So, so there are variations. There are variations to this, and the sour cream is just gonna give it that thickness that you're looking for. So I'm gonna do all of this. It's coming together like real smooth mm -hmm. too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Sasha, what I want you to do is now you know seasoning is a girl's best friend. Okay. You know I mean? Okay. So um, I think this is a little parsley here, but we'll wait on the parsley. I would use some of the. Um, the seasoning here, the mixed seasoning, be careful how much salt you use. So I, don't, I use seasonings without salt in it, but it's still delicious and have a great flavor. So I would just pour a couple of those in there. Just a little bit, mm -hmm. you tell me when. That's enough. Yeah. All right. And then let's go with the other, let's just. So what you do is you're gonna mix, you're gonna taste, mix and taste, right? But we already, oh, that look amazing. Let me put this it looks on. so good. Okay, so this is what we're doing, y'all. And it's colorful. Smell it. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait to taste it. <laughs> Look at my phone ready. <laughs> okay, anyway. Now, at this point, this is when you put the main ingredient, which is the heavy cream. Now, y'all, I want y'all to understand something. They have heavy cream. They got heavy, heavy cream, whipping cream. I just use heavy cream in there, okay? You can use whatever you want, but I will use heavy cream. You have to show them this. Man, this it smells just, good. It's so pretty, too. I mean, like, I don't know. Food can be very pretty, yeah. and it can be attractive to the eye, and this is very attractive with all the different colors. Now, what I do is you can let this cook down, and then you can put your cheddar cheese in there, and you put your Parmesan. Parmesan is going to give it the flavor. That's what's going to give it that mm, cook, that mm, okay? That's that Parmesan. So I'm gonna put the Parmesan in. Look at that. Shit. Okay, so you put. I'm gonna all, let you. Okay, you I do put, put it all. You in didn't there. put all the Parmesan. Okay. Yes. Now, how much of the cheddar would you put? Would you put all of it, being that you put the I would. Parmesan yeah, as well? Yeah, I would. You know, my kids really. I give it to my kids, even though we don't. You oh, know, this is even though it's a good postpartum dish, good. I still give it to my kids. 
It smells amazing. Oh yeah, y'all. I promise y'all. And this is hearty. Like this is a lot of food, and you can yeah. can, you can you do meal prepping. It? You can, of course. Why Absolutely. Not? Yeah. Okay. But be yes. careful too, because you don't want to like. For instance, you can meal prep, and I would vacuum seal it if I'm gonna freeze it. I would vacuum seal it. Okay. You know because you, you want it to keep it fresh still. Oh you know? yeah. But if of you do greens. freeze it, you you know there's a freeze time on everything, so you want to just be. Be careful, okay? Now, what about this? Was I supposed to put some of this in there? Yeah, but I would have to cook. We would have to cook, cook this it down. down. And okay. And when it starts to really cook and come together, I would put the cheese in, and then I would sprinkle the parmesan, a little parmesan. I would actually sprinkle the cheese. I would sprinkle the cheese in, and I would definitely make sure we do. Oh, excuse me. The parmesan. So these are, would be more like the toppings after. Well, everything. no, you could put a little bit, of, a little bit of Parmesan in there because they ain't gonna do nothing but melt. So, and then you can leave a, the rest for the topping. Okay. To give you when some it's more nice of that and pump. hot. Yeah. Okay. One of the things about your food is you want to taste your food because I don't know nobody who cook who don't taste their food. You gonna have to taste your food now and make sure that it's not overly. Yeah, overly break. Listen, guys, we're getting ready to go to a break, and when I tell you this meal is going to be. Ready for the tasting, okay? We'll come right back after this commercial break. being a mother for the first time can be mesmerizing. However, it also comes with a great deal of responsibility. Taking care of a newborn can be really exhausting during the initial months. So how are you supposed to take on that role? Introducing Ask a Doula, a transition guide for new mothers. Ask a Doula is the new mommy's toolbox for birth preparation and postpartum care that will make you feel at ease, empowered, and supported in your journey as a mom-to-be. Order today from Amazon. Well, guys, we are back with the finished product. I mean, guys, listen, all of these ingredients marinated to a beautiful finish. Make sure that you're putting it um, on the stove. And if, you, if you're just not a stove person, it's okay to use a crock pot. It's okay. So I want my guest, well, my co-host, to let me know <laughs> what she think. So right. let's go ahead and put, um, what I will do is I will put some Parmesan, a little parsley to it, and then okay. go from there. Okay. So. <clears throat> Let's do it. <coughs> Sorry. There, yeah, there you go. Go ahead. Put some more parmesan on. Don't be bashful now. Just put a little bit more parmesan on it. Yes. Keep going. Keep going. Now this can be considered a pasta dish. If not, you can also make it into a small dish. Oh, well, there we go. All right. They get some of the chicken. <clears throat> What you say? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, y'all. That is so good. It is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. So, guys, see, this is an easy. Oh yes. Is this good? <laughs> sorry, y'all. I'm trying to. Them chicken chunks are huge. Yeah, they're huge. It's so filling. Yeah. And you only need mm. a little bit, you know, and you can freeze it and um, and um, use it as a meal prep as well. This so is excellent. Part of being, part of going through the part of going through the fourth trimester um, stage after having a baby is to make sure that your nutrition is good. Make sure that you're really eating. A lot of times with my moms, they're saying, I'm not producing enough milk, I'm not doing this. So my main goal is you have to eat enough. You don't have to, when I say eat enough, I don't mean you have to overly eat. You just have to eat those nutritional meals. Stay, don't do too much pasta, but at least add a few pastas in your, in your diet. Yep. And you know, I'll say this about the dish. I was a little nervous personally when you dumped all them greens in there. Okay. But I see that it, it, it came all the way down, it cooked all the way down, and it's not overpowering. Cause when I first saw it, I was a little bit nervous, yeah. like, oh, it's so big, yeah. but it cooked down and all the flavors came together. So I would highly recommend this. I had no clue about this meal, but I'm gonna need this uh, recipe just yeah. for me. Yeah. So, well, there good we go. job. Thank you. <laughs> it's a wrap with this It's one. a wrap. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning into the postpartum health. When I tell you guys, postpartum meals are absolutely amazing for your health, for your milk production. So if you're having any issues or anything that you need help with, definitely make sure you reach out to us. And until next time, 